most expensive hair dryer on the market. The Dyson hair dryer sets a new benchmark as to what hair dryers can do. Case in point, it was sold out all of last year. In today's video, we're going to talk about all the things that I like about this dryer, the sneaky things that I don't like, and then there's the big question. Is it worth it? Is it worth saving for months for this dryer? Or low-key harassing your family so that they can give it to you as a gift for Easter? This is what I had to do, by the way, and I can vouch that it works. I didn't get it for Easter, but I got it for my birthday. Well, let's unbox this dryer so you have a better idea of what's inside and hear my thoughts. So I have the special edition Dyson dryer in Prussian blue and rich copper. The dryer comes in this complimentary presentation case which is sturdy and I quite like it because it can hide the cord and ultimately the mess within the case. It safely protects the dryer as well. As far as the dryer go, the first thing that you notice is that it is incredibly well built. Given that I upgraded from this flimsy old dryer that I have from Walmart, like is this even classified as a dryer? I can tell you that the Dyson makes a world of a difference. The body itself has minimal buttons. There are two main ones that control the speed as well as the heat. There are three different speeds and as well as heat, there's a low, medium, and high. And let me tell you, it gets really hot. At a whooping 549 Canadian dollars, yes, you heard that right, 549 dollars. The dryer comes with five styling attachments, a paddle brush, as well as a wide tooth comb. The attachments snap magnetically to the main body, which is a little fancy. It's right up my alley to be honest. It makes me feel very shishi. Let's quickly go through the attachments that you get in case you are interested, which I guess if you're watching this video, you are. You get a flyaway attachment and if you haven't noticed, I have kinky hair so I don't really care so much about that one. Next. There's a gentle air attachment that diffuses the air to create a cooler airflow, but yet still allows your hair to dry fast. Moving on to the white tooth comb attachment, it's perfect for blow drying kinky hair, and it allows you to detangle your hair while you're drying at the same time. We also have a styling concentrator for when you really want to heat the roots and stretch your hair. And lastly, the attachment that I use all of the time between you and I, it's the only one that I use in my hair unless I'm blow drying my dog or something. And let me tell you something, for the price of this dryer, everyone up in this house is getting blow dried, okay? The diffuser disperses the air more evenly around your curls. The diffuser stimulates natural drying, which help reduce frizz and define your curls and waves. The longer prongs allow you to style more hair with greater control and reach deeper into the hair. Now, when it comes to the diffuser, there is a bit of a learning curve, especially if you have kinky, tight curls like I do. You know how you see all the videos of people with curly hair pulling their hair into the diffuser and crunching it up? Don't do that, don't do that. Do not do that. Actually, I'm going to show you exactly how I use this dryer so that you can actually minimize frizz because if you're doing this, you will end up with frizzy hair. Take it from me. There's a few tools that are also included. One of them is this wide tooth comb. And we also have this lovely paddle brush. It feels really nice, um, but I use it on my dog. Like I said, we're all getting blow dried up in this house. Now let's talk about how to use your Dyson dryer because as powerful as it is and as wonderful as it is, if you don't know what you're doing, especially when it comes to naturally kinky hair, forcey hair, then you're not going to get the best result and you're going to think that I wasted my money. But thank God you saw this video because I'm going to include a clip of a stylist talking about how to use the Dyson for your natural hair. Oh, he dokes. So for me, I tend to do high density tight pore bottoms. Okay. And usually when diffusing that, we can't tackle it the way we see online. Um, I don't go to the roots first, simply because 
it's soaking wet and with high density air, that's like a ridiculous task to tackle first. You know your roots take very long to dry, they're probably the last one to dry. <laughs> okay? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, and also I feel like it also causes more frizz when you're trying to get to the roots and mm -hmm. by manipulating your hair while it's already soaking wet. So for me, what I like to do and how I like to start is I like to dry the um, end, mid lens to end, the outer area. Okay, and then I like to also go under the nape and around the face and hairline because that's also an area that is hidden and if you yeah. don't tackle it, it will stay wet and product that hasn't dried, it will have like okay. a little bit of, I'll show. You'll that's a good strategy, of, yeah. you're going for the hardest parts yeah. first, like mm -hmm. well the perimeter as well as the end, right? Yes. Like you're tackling the issue exactly. from the outside end. Yes, and then okay. once you could feel that it's like, it's like it's dry, it feels like it's dry. The roots, um, you want to tackle up here because hair also takes long to dry. And once you do that, it kind of feels for me like, okay. And then once I feel like that, like that's just like a protective shell, then I go in. Okay. Um, and this for me again with high density, yes, it's going to get voluminous. Um, but sometimes a lot of us day one, we don't like that very flat look you get from using like hard holding stylers um, or gels. Mm -hmm. So to do that, but still have a wash and go that's going to last you seven days, two weeks, if you really want to, you really just have to put the work in. You literally would lightly lift, and because this is all dry, it's already dried exactly how you set it. Mm, yeah, okay. so you just gently lift and you continue to, you know, hover your diffuser around and lift at the roots mm -hmm. and continue to dry. That is a much faster way of drying the hair than trying to tackle the roots and then have all that water weight there and some frizz. Yeah, because I had yeah, a ton of control. frizz actually when I did it myself. Yeah. Because I, I wasn't sure, so I would scrunch it up first of Yeah, all. that is not for us. That is not for us. <laughs> yeah, it's for the type, uh, yeah, I only use that on like type 2 girls and maybe 3A and 3B because they their hair, their texture is, it's heavy. Head so it hangs so loose. Yeah. Okay. So that will help to, you know, encourage the curls to like shrink and shrink bounce. Shrink yeah. give them more volume. Exactly. Because and also, we're already, we, we already have the volume. Yeah, we are not, yeah, we're, we already have the volume. Basically what they're trying to say is you should embrace what you yeah, have. Yeah, you have the volume. You don't need it. Mm -hmm. The looser textures want the volume because their hair tends to lie very flat on their head okay. and their curls just sit like, they don't see as much definition. It just sits long or hangs like below there. It's like soft waves. Okay. So okay. their method of drying helps to maximize their um, definition okay. as well as um, volume okay. and encourage some shrinkage. Oh, but for us, beautiful. we don't need to do that. Yeah. yeah. And you don't, you're not going to get a massive amount of volume where it's like, well, this is too much or it's frizzy. This is still frizz free with volume okay. and it's going to get frizzier as the days go by simply because that's our hair's natural trait of, and that's high density is going to show us volume like that. Exactly. And you again, embrace, you have to. Right. And honestly, if you dry your hair properly and if you do start up the ends before your roots, you're going to have a long lasting definition because to be honest, when you see a curly head, their hair is as curly as the ends look. We don't get to see our roots on high density hair, so what's the point? <laughs> like, that's, that shouldn't be the focus. The ends are the focus. That's what yeah. people are seeing first. No one sees your head top unless they're super close to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. try that first. And at that point, it's like boundary. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Please give me 50 feet. Yeah. You're, like, you're, in, my, you're in my bubble. Like, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing as perfection. No, at all. And then when you dry it first, you can see exactly how it's set. There's yeah, no frizz. Good. If you're manipulating it while it's wet just to get to the roots, yeah. you're going to encourage the frizz. Okay, because that's yeah. what happens to me. So basically, you're not trying to get to your roots first. Mm -mm. And no scrunching. Don't do the scrunching. We don't need it on type 4, high density hair. Yeah. And go from the outside in. Yes. And as it dries, then you can move it up. And, exactly. And shape it as you want. Yes, and we don't need to be doing like the throwing your hair to the front to dry oh, off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we already again have the volume. They do that for volume. Okay. They wanna like lift their hair off of their scalp because yeah. it tends to just sit on their scalp. that's what you see. Yeah. And I, I heard that you should sit under the dryer first for about 10 minutes, like the hooded dryer, mm -hmm. and then use the Dyson. Do you think that's necessary? No, that does not have That's a lot, right? Because I mean, no. the whole point of just, buying this yeah, Dyson Just pick one or the other. You there. don't need to do that. You just pick one or the other. The okay. other. You don't have to so do that So you could just sit under the dryer too. Or, that's yeah, the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, because this is giving you the same results. <laughs> it's not different, <laughs> and it's much faster than the dryer for me. Yeah, I can't see like under. Like, how long does that take? The dryer when you do the nitrogen. I feel like depending on the density, it could be like 
20 minutes, okay. 30. Yeah, that's the way. Oh, um, look at my hair. Actually, yeah, I like to give some air to the roots. After okay. You know, so that way you get a lot of movement. Now you can give it a little shake a <laughs> You want? Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> Perfect. And then you could part it, let it sit how you want, and we'll take a look at all sides, and I'll go in and just sharpen up your shape back. Oh, thank you. It was, it's perfect. <laughs> So when I am using it on my own, now that I got a better understanding as to how this works, especially from talking to my stylist, I really enjoy using this thing. There's a lot of little things about this that I love. First of all, how powerful this is, okay? This is no joke. The first time that I used this, I really didn't know what I was doing, so I put it on high heat and high airflow. And let me tell you something, the smoke detectors in my house went off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was insane. So I really like it. I love the slick design. It just looks really good. It looks very modern. And I know this isn't a huge deal, but I really love how the attachment just snap right onto the main unit. You don't have to do anything. It just snaps right on. And it's a nice little feature. I also love how long the handle is, so when you are holding it against your hair, you don't have to get your arm all the way up there. This is not a shoulder workout, it's you just trying to dry your hair, okay? So let's keep it together. So you don't actually need to get your hand all the way up here, you can just hover around your hair like this and it's pretty nice to have a long handle like that. And that's also coming from me using this tiny little thing, right? It doesn't have much of a handle if you want to compare it to the Dyson. So for this, this is a shoulder workout. The Dyson, I don't have to work as hard. And since I spend so much money, I shouldn't have to. It does dry your hair very fast. There's a reason why Dyson is well known for their dryers, is because of how fast it's going to get your hair dry. It's very fast, I have to say. It takes me about 20, 25 minutes to dry my hair with this and that's comparing it to sitting under a hooded dryer which would take me about an hour. So it is quite powerful, it is very fast, not extremely fast. It's not like I'm gonna be done in 10 minutes. It would be nice, but fast enough. And yeah, love the long handle. And another thing that's also nice is that the cord is extremely long. So you don't have to be glued to the wall when you are drying your hair. So you have quite a bit of a stretch, okay, when it comes to the handle, so that is great. And lastly, I also quite enjoy the case. I find it very nice, it's sleek, you know, it doesn't take a lot of space under your cabinets and it just looks really good. It's of quality, you can tell, and you're able to hide your dryer and the cord, which can look pretty messy, all in this box. So that's another good thing. Now there are two things that I don't necessarily love about this dryer, and it is, as much as I like the long cord, it's also kind of annoying having to wrap the cord every single time for it to fit inside of the box. And it's not a huge deal, of course, but it's annoying, okay? Trying to get the cord in here can be a little annoying, and I have to say, it's not my favorite thing to do, okay? I wish that the cord will snap inside of the box by itself. I mean, for $500, is that too much to ask? The second thing that I don't enjoy, it's the price. Let me tell you something, this is very expensive. And if you live in Canada, it's even more expensive. So let me tell you a little story as to how we got this dryer here. So like I told you, I've been dropping several hands so that my husband gets it for me and he did get it for me for my birthday. At the time, it was not in stock in Canada, but it was in stock in the States. So he went and got it in the States. And in the States, it's about $399 or something like that. So with the conversion, it ended up being about the same price, 500 bucks which is great. But then a few days later, it was in stock in Canada, so, oh my God. But the problem with buying it in the States is that they don't ship to Canada. So he had to get it shipped to a friend and the friend had to ship it to us. And between shipping to the friend and shipping to me, it cost a lot of money, okay? I don't even want to say how much it cost to get this dryer here. <laughs> so all that to say, it is not a cheap, 
product it is quite pricey and basically at this point it is an investment into your hair care routine investment for hair and the Haitian in me you know is kind of dying thinking about the amount of money that we're spent on a hair dryer so definitely a con although given that this is such a powerful unit and I can see this last honestly a lifetime I'll swallow it since I'm the wash and go queen and I feel like I've been doing wash and goes back to back to back and I don't necessarily love sitting under a hooded dryer I felt like it was necessary to bring you this video let me know what was your favorite part and if you would purchase this dryer and if you would I would conveniently put a link down in the description box thank you so much for watching I hope that you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in my next one bye